to Classics Confidential and I'm here in the Institute of Classical Studies in London talking with Ella Sullivan who's just finished her Masters at UCL in the Reception of the Ancient World. Um, and Ella's going to tell us about her dissertation on, um, on Livia. Can you start off by telling us who Livia was? Um, well, Livia uh, is Livia Drusilla and she was um, kind of best known as the wife of Augustus Caesar. Um, and she's often called the first empress of Rome. She was also the mother of Tiberius, mm -hmm. um, and she's well known for perhaps um, having a lot of influence mm -hmm. um, in Rome. How do we know about her? What are the sources for her life? Um, well, there are, uh, there are quite a few ancient sources who talk about her, and the historians talk about her. Uh, Tacitus, uh, Suetonius talks mm -hmm. about her, and Cassius Dio as well um, talks about her, but she also appears on coinage, mm -hmm. um, uh, she was deified, so there were statues made um, after her death, and statues were dedicated to her in Rome as well. Um, so what do the ancient authors have to say about her, do they portray her as a, as a likeable character? Um, well, it depends on the ancient <laughs> historian, but... Um, in general, um, it's often said that uh, Livia, because she was very determined, or thought to be very determined, to get her son Tiberius um, to be emperor. And uh, she's charged with um, doing anything in her power to mm. get that to happen, including murdering people. So um, the ancient historians deal with her differently. It's now thought that there's no evidence for that. Mm -hmm. Um, for her trying to... To ki yeah, yeah, okay, killing yeah, people yeah. who were potential heirs to the throne. Right. Like Marcellus, for example, uh, or Gaius and Lucius. Mm -hmm. um, and some of our ancient sources, um, Suetonius and Dio, um, tend to be... Um, they perhaps say it's not it's not true, or there are other reasons, like that uh, there were plagues in Rome at the time, mm -hmm. and... But they still mention the accusations. They, yeah, they, it, it, there are hints there mm -hmm. that, that rumours were flying around. Right. Uh, but Tacitus is slightly more strong-willed on the point, um, and uh, suggests, although it never says it's certain, um, but his motivations, as I looked at in my dissertation, um, his motivation have been called into question um, sometimes about his depiction of Livia uh -huh. um, because he was a great Republican and um, Livia wasn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so it was thought that Tacitus wrote about Livia and purposely didn't refute the rumours. Right. Because... Um, because of his own agenda. Exactly, and, yeah, yeah. And he was trying to show yeah. that power had moved into the imperial home and it was therefore open to corruption mm -hmm. uh, and it's been taken away from the Senate. Mm -hmm. um, so his is a more complex presentation of Livia. And what happens to Livia in I Claudius then? What does Robert Graves do with these ancient sources? Well, um, what Robert Graves did, my um, dissertation looked at everything up um, through Robert Graves, um, the reception of Livia to the TV series. Mm -hmm. In the, in the mid-70s? That's in the yeah, mid-70s, yeah. yeah. And Robert Graves was writing in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, it seems as if Livia has been... Um, her personality on her image as a villainess has been magnified throughout those layerings of reception. Right. Um, so, Robert Graves, um, for example, chooses to really depend upon Tacitus for his view of who Livia is. Mm -hmm. And rather than mentioning rumours, there seems to be, we seem to be quite sure that she's the person uh. <laughs> um, who's killing people, for example. Um, and that's because Graves wanted A to create a good story. Yeah. Um, and B, it's often thought that Graves was concentrating on um, corruption of some of the individual uh, emperors, Caligula, for example. Mm -hmm. And he was creating parallels with dictators in the 1930s. Right. Um, so he was trying to make. Overall, it's thought that Graves' um, aim was to draw Claudius in a different light um, in comparison to all these other emperors. And to do that, he made Livia particularly wicked mm -hmm. so that Claudius could be seen as perhaps um, more intelligent um, uh. than, than historians had thought. That was Graves' um, point of view. Uh, okay. That maybe he was duping 
even Livia, who was a scheming and very intelligent person. In the series, Livia's even more evil than she could be in Robert Graves' writings. Um, she's brought to the forefront a lot, because in the book, Claudius is our narrator. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the series, Claudius just comes at the beginning and the end of the programmes. And Livia um, is really the person that we identify with. Mm -hmm. She's the main protagonist for about half the series. There are mm -hmm. 13 episodes, and uh, for about seven of them, mm -hmm. Livia is at the forefront of our minds and our screens. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she is... The, I mean, the camera work um, and the series is really enjoyable because mm -hmm. she is... Um, She's a, she's a fascinating character who is willing and very ruthless and willing to do anything to get what she wants. Who plays her? Um, Sean Phillips, who is um, an actress um, in, the, in the 70s, who was, uh, and still famous, but a famous actress in the 70s. Um, and also around the series, there's a lot of things um, potentially to do with feminism. Mm -hmm. um, so I looked, when I did my dissertation, I looked at Sean Phillips's earlier roles and found, for example, that she played Emily Pankhurst. Oh. Um, so around this time, uh, there were there were lots of, for example, the Sex Discrimination Act mm -hmm. was uh, a year before I Claudius was produced and and, and aired. Mm. So. And what, her portrayal of Evelyn Pankhurst, was that a film or a series? It was a mini-series. Mini-series. Yeah, about the lives of the Pankhurst women. Uh -huh. um, and, yeah, she played Emily Pankhurst, and, and, and a particularly, as a particularly militant feminist. Yeah. So, that, the face of Emily Pankhurst was, you know, now the face of Livia Drusilla. Oh, how interesting, because viewers watching I, Claudius would possibly recognise yeah, I mean, the it, actress from her role as Pankhurst. Exactly. And make that connection. Maybe. Yeah, and the fact that the series brought her out so much. And, and actually, in the series, um, Sean Phillips is given lines um, that in the book, Livia doesn't have. Mm. For example, when Augustus is dying, she says, um, you pushed me aside because I was a woman. Um, so there are lots of ties to what's happening in the 70s um, uh, in, in comparison uh, that have developed yes. from when Graves was writing. So. But you said that the portrayal of Livia in the television series, she was sort of even worse than ever before. She How was. does that tie in then with the whole women's... Well, it's an, yeah, yeah, that's an interesting paradox. But um, if you look at the makeup of the TV series... A lot of what the directors are doing is tying in, um, tying the story of I Claudius into mm. a TV genre, mm. which is very motivated and, and very influenced by soap opera, really. Yeah. Um, so Livia is our perfect soap opera villainess who can be found in any soap. <laughs> and all, all the um, actors of the series said, "This is Roman Coronation Street," for example. So <laughs> Olivia was. Perfect um, to use as all the cliffhangers at the beginning of the series are Livia potentially, uh, you know, Livia plotting and, and a great crescendo as to yes, I've decided to kill Gaius and Lucius, yeah. roll credits. Yeah. Um, so she was a perfect character. Um, and also, even though she was this huge villain in the series, the audience reaction, the consumption of the series, people tended to really warm to her and like her because, oh, yeah, it's an interesting funny. thing because yeah. she was really humorous. Um, she has some really funny throwaway lines and puns when she's killing people. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, despite what she was doing, people did actually warm to her. How funny. I wonder if they anticipated that, the people who were writing the series. Yeah, well, um, it was Jack Pullman who wrote the um, screen, screenplay. And he was appealing to, you know, normal family audiences at home and he wanted to make something that was funny as yeah. well as anything else. Yeah. So, um, and I think also the way Sean Phillips played the role as well, um, kind of expertly subtle um, yes. and brought a lot of humour into it as well. And it does have an enormous impact on popular receptions of Roman times, didn't it? It's oh, absolutely. Really yeah. important reception. I think when people think of Livia Drusilla, they think of Sean Phillips. Yes. Uh, that's said in a lot of yes. her biographies. 
Um, of course, recently she's been, um, her character's been in HBO Rome as well. Yeah, what did you think of that then? Yeah, well, uh, interesting and, and slightly less, um, uh, although not that you could call the Graves interpretation particularly um, accurate, yeah. but it's, it, that's taken away even further from the oh. sources. Um, but yeah, I mean, her, the thing that seems to um, resonate throughout history is that she is this great murderess, and in actual fact, in ancient times, Livia was um, upheld as a paragon of virtue, yes. um, and she, um, Augustus, purposefully um, circulated that image of Livia, and she was the role model for the women in Roman family, which mm -hmm. was going to underpin the stability of Augustus's new Rome. Mm. Um, so, in ancient times, you know, there are there are stories of her. The, the doors being um, flung open to the palace and, and mm. Livia could be seen mm -hmm. mending clothes and, and, and doing domestic chores and... Uh, <laughs> Much less exciting exactly. than... Exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Less, Murdering. <laughs> definitely. Less exciting, but definitely more useful mm. to Augustus. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and to his popularity. Mm. Yeah. Ben, thank, thank you very much for coming to talk to us about Thanks your dissertation. <laughs> thank you.